Hey, grace and peace. Welcome to Change Bible Study. My name is Chris Bailey, and today we're going to talk about why mercy is always on time. But before we go there in Exodus 20, let's pray. Lord, we do want to pray that you will speak to our hearts and help us to understand your mercy to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's a beautiful thing to think about when you go to Exodus chapter 20, which is normally known as the chapter of the Ten Commandments. The, the beauty, the, the, the chewy, sweet center of the revelation of God's character and his law is mercy. Because look at what it says there in Exodus 20, beginning in verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Showing mercy is God's showcase. It is what he loves to do. It is what he desires to do. Mercy is not an afterthought. In fact, it's the, it's the, the discipline. It's the, the visiting of iniquity. That's the afterthought. That's something that is brought about by virtue of our condition. But by virtue of who he is, it is mercy. It is the not giving what sinners deserve and then the grace of giving what sinners don't deserve. That truly is who he is. In fact, when you go forward, look in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 5, beginning verse 9 and 10. He says again, Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandment. Here is the beautiful repetition. The righteous repetition. It's repeated because he does not want us to miss the fact that he is merciful. It's important for us to see this repetition because it's not that the Lord was not heard. He's not stuttering. He's wanting to make sure you don't miss it. The Father is merciful. How merciful? Let's look back in the Word. In Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. The mercy is spoken of with a certainty, a will, not a might, not a maybe. It's not made conditional. And the reason why the mercy is not made conditional is because the mercy is based on character. It is who he is. As we would say today, it's how he rolls. He can't do something other than what he is. A toaster can't boil and a pot can't jump. They don't do those things because that's not what they were made to do. But our father, he is merciful because it's who he is. It's not an afterthought. It is his intent. In fact, when he says, I'll be merciful to the wicked, it's for us. It's for those who've not been on point. It's for those who don't deserve. Remember, that's the very definition of mercy. Not giving one or giving someone what they deserve. Someone who's been found guilty and rather than offering them guilt, you give them grace. This is what mercy does, and this is who he is. In fact, look at Psalm 103, verse number 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Here they are working together in tandem. Mercy not giving me what I deserve, while grace gives me what I do not deserve. He is slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. The word plenteous. Why plenteous? Not just a lot or not just some, but plenteous. It almost is at, it's like saying you won't run out. In fact, that means there's more mercy than there is my mess. That means that there is more grace than there is my going astray. And so ultimately, what I recognize is is that I can't be a better sinner than Jesus is a savior. And the only way to be lost is simply to cut off the salvation, to just outright refuse it. But if you haven't refused it, 
If you still hunger for it, if you still want it, if you're still yearning for righteousness and you want to be free, that is evidence that you have not gone too far. Because it's God which worketh in you both to will and to do. See, the same power to do, it's his will in you wanting to do right. And if you've got that desire to do right, that's the evidence that God is waiting for you to accept him so that he can do right in you. There's hope. There's salvation because not of where you are, but because of who he is. He is merciful, gracious, plenteous in mercy. So finally, Psalm 130, verse 7, let Israel hope in the Lord. For with the Lord, there's mercy. And with him is plenteous redemption. Our hope is in the Lord's mercy and not in whether or not we can get it. Our hope is in the Lord's mercy and not in whether or not we can earn it. Our hope is in who he is, that he can change who we are. Hope in the Lord today. Stop thinking about what you can do. Stop thinking about what you've done. Hope in the Lord. When we start hoping in the Lord, we'll start hopping in the Lord. When we start hoping in the Lord, we'll be happy in the Lord. But it won't be until we first hope in the Lord. Remember what the Bible says. For then, as much as God gave them like gifts as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? Why then they heard these things, when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then God had also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Mercy is for all. Mercy is for all, meaning that mercy is for me. Jew and Gentile, good and bad alike, because really what the Bible says is we're all bad. But Jesus is all good.